Combat Academy, which originally aired as Combat High, is a 1986 made-for-TV movie directed by Neil Israel and stars Keith Gordon, Wallace Langham, George Clooney, Dana Hill, Tina Cosprey, Robert Culp, Jamie Farr, Sherman Helmsley, Richard Mall, John Ratzenberger, Dick Van Patten, and Bernie Capel. Max and Perry have a reputation for pranks and assault their school on the first day of classes. Felony, felony, and I think this locker explosion can be classified as an act of terrorism. Oh, and add trying to spread bird flu to the list. They have an encounter, foreshadowing, with students from the local military academy and establish that Max is just a dick. Playing in the street. Children. Let me clue you in on something, okay? We ain't the ones wearing the Winnie the Pooh back to military school collection clothing. Max, I'm okay, really. Kevin, tell him you're sorry. Oh, no, no, no don't bother, Kevin. Don't bother, don't bother. Cause sorry don't smoke the Admiral's pipe, okay? Oh, you showed them with that fucking bumper sticker. I'm already sympathetic, just not to any of the main characters. Good job in the first ten minutes of the movie. They pull a prank on a street crew that send them to the Domain of Justice. And so I am sentencing you, Maxwell Mendelssohn, and you, Percival Barnett, to the full school year at the Kirkland Military Academy. How ironic. Now we can go full police academy mode. Because believe me, I like to see these two pricks at the Blue Oyster Bar. Here is a list, Ed, of everything that was reported stolen so far. Whoever this cadet is, he moves around like a monkey on a barbed wire fence. Subplot alert! They meet General Woods and express my feelings over watching this film. Yo, sir. Come on, Barnett, get your wearing gear. They'll get married and have five kids. They're shown around by European vacation Audrey and in a stroke of shitty screenwriting end up rooming with the guys they were shitty to earlier in the movie. Coincidence? Or psychic phenomena. Perry runs into the girl again, which I believe is considered harassment and stalking. Hey, where are the floating candelabras? Merciful Lord, we thank you for the food we are about to consume. Prayer? Not with my fucking tax dollars. What the fuck? We learn that the Dirty Ruskies are coming for the War Games and Biff. Biff? You fucking serious about that name? Is General Wood's son. I really hope Jamie Farr goes full clinger drag in this. Of course, the worst part is, I don't think this movie has any Sergeant Hulka. It's Johnny Reb! Mendelssohn Barnett! What are you two doing? Get back here! It's a civil war all over again. We're gonna emancipate the thieves. Look, here's one of those poor fellers now. Go, my child, you are free! Keep your hands off me. What the fuck? That's pure 80s right there. In the worst cell job ever, Mary Beth gets injured and Perry carries her to Canada for health care. Bull Shannon shows up because in 1986, Night Court had ratings. I bet you can't guess what network this ran on. Max and Perry start pranking to a shitty Talking Heads cover band. You might get what you're after. Cool, baby. Strange but not a stranger. I'm an ordinary guy. Burning down the house. Robert Culp needs to switch to Sanka after learning they won't be getting tossed from the Academy. Listen! You little weasel! You are never, ever getting out of here! So! This is kind of a non-issue once the pair start to argue and split up as best friends because this was long before the bros before hoes philosophy. New looks chasing out the old on every corner. 
moving for myself today so yesterday move over max and biff wind up in thunderdome where we get a terrible rocky imitation you're the disease and i'm the cure <laughs> come on, come on. farting around and this stupid look because you're shocked that you got punched in a fist fight later on though max learns that biff tends to have a watch fetish and here come the commies for an awkward dinner honestly has anyone ever been in a cafeteria where two groups are staring each other down screw that i want my tapioca pudding i was in a food court once where skinheads were practically starting a riot and i just walked on by so i could get my mini hot dogs in a pretzel with cheese Perry feels like the man left out in the cold by his pals and gets dumped when Mary Beth announces her boyfriend is coming for the glass dance. He ends up crawling back to Max because he lost his strange and the ice does begin to thaw until... Private Mendelssohn, drop and give me ten. Midnight in Moscow. I'm glad they figured out a title for that Donald Trump piss tape. Hey, Major, I brought you those three pairs of blue jeans you wanted, plus the video cassette tapes of the Bill Cosby show. I love Bill Cosby. Another network clue! Perry is our creeper for the evening. and Audrey rock back and forth, eventually sharing a kiss. Scandal! Biff steals a Russian's watch, but it's Max that throws himself under the bus for a one-way ticket out of there. I don't care about state support or the money. It's not worth it. Let's see how the inside of a prison suits you. And straight in the prison! Biff barges in and takes the blame, saying that he did it because, Dad, you're an asshole. Mary Beth professes her love for Perry and so they learn that I his mean, anger issues cause him to lose his stutter. Help. Say that again. What? What you just said. Say it again. Listen to yourself. You're not stuttering. Then they bang behind the counter. Oh, TV movie? They cuddle behind the counter. Biff is now an outcast, but Max is there to deliver a great foot massage. Down your head! Let me see your war face! Everyone is dead or captured, so Max sets up for Biff to take control and become a hero. International incident averted. The U.S. and Soviets are now friends because Rocky IV, and we get a head-shaking 1980s ending. Ugh. Originally called Combat High when it first aired, the title has changed to Combat Academy when it went into syndication to capitalize on director Neil Israel's association with the Police Academy franchise. No shit. Full of cliches and poor acting, the film is forgettable for a reason. The big problem is, you hate all the characters. Max is an asshole, Perry is a whiny bitch, Biff is a klepto, Mary Beth is a two-timing whore, and General Woods is a crazed megalomaniac. They're all terrible people. Why should I give a shit about any of them? The only character I have sympathy for is Mr. Dickovich who gets his fucking watch stolen. By the end of the movie, I was rooting for the Russians. It's like a bizarre ripoff of Rocky IV's basic plot, but we do discover that George Clooney was one of the many keys to the fall of the Soviet Union. I smell bacon. Does anybody here smell bacon? I love bacon, and I love a hard mattress. We're going to have a movie today.